Hey guys, my name is John Hamilton and today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up some basic movement for your player. So I'm going to be teaching you how to use the keyboard and the motion actuator and sensor to move your player around and be able to rotate it and move it back and forth. Now if you're an intermediate or advanced user this is probably going to be a bit boring for you so you might want to look at another tutorial on my channel about something else. But if you are a beginner and you want to know how you can move your, your cube around and have a collision with stuff, this would be great for you. So let's get into it and let's learn how to do it. Alright, so as you can see I have a fresh blender open and we're going to be making this cube move around. So you're going to be able to like drive it forward and like turn it and stuff. So we want to come over here to the game logic layout. And as you can see down here, it gives us a whole new little window. As you can see, it has properties, sensors, controllers, and actuators. All right. So we want to detect on this cube if our player is pressing forward. And for this example, I'm going to be using the W, A, S, and D keys for moving our object or player around. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here, grab the cube, and we are going to add a sensor. And this is going to be a keyboard. So what this keyboard sensor is going to do is it's going to detect if we're pressing a certain key and then send a signal out. So what we want to do is we want to click on here and then just click the key on the keyboard we want it to be. So let's say W. Now, if you want a clear key from here, just click it and then click nowhere else and you won't have a key there. So, we're going to have W and I'm just going to name this W so you can easily see it's keyboard and the key's W right here. So, we want this to move forward. So, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to add a motion sense, uh, actuator. Sorry. And when you add this, you have a few settings you can change. So, you have the X, the Y and the Z lock and that means location so you can go forward at a certain speed so let's say we want to go in the y direction we could set this to something like 0.1 what you see is if we were to grab these and connect this up and close this our making sure we're in blender game because you can't you can't just play if you're not in the game. Now you can press P to play. When we click W, as you can see, we move forward. Now, you might be wondering what the controller does. Well, this allows you to have a uh, bit more control. So let's say you wanted it to, if only if you were clicking S, S, and we're to connect that up, S and W, it would, it would, and see, it says and here, so if S and W were pressed, then it would let you move forward. But you could also do this here, you could just add another modifier key and say this is S. But for now, we are just going to leave this because that is not what this tutorial is about. But these are not really that important, at least you're doing super advanced stuff, so you can pretty much leave that, you just need one of those in the middle. Right, so... Let's say we want our cube to be able to rotate. So what we do is we add a keyboard. And let's say we click D and it will rotate. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a, another motion. And we are going to make this turn. So ROT stands for rotation. So it means we can rotate an object in a certain direction. So, in this case, we want it to be rotating from the top, so we want it to be rotating like this. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a number in here. So, you can set this to 1, and what you'll see is when we click D, nothing happens because we did not connect it up. So, we need to connect that up, close that. And what you see, we click D, and it's rotating in the wrong direction. So what you want to do is you want to go minus 1. And what you see, we can turn. And here we go. 
So turns. So what you can do is you could go ahead and set this up for the rest. So you could go S backwards, um, S backwards, and you could go A, which will go the other, rotate the other direction. So we could go add two more motions, motion, and you could say point 0.1 minus point 0.1 on the y direction. Um, now you could change this to minus point 0.2 if you want a faster speed. As you can see, nothing's happening because we need to connect these up. So like that. Um, you see, so you can rotate, turn, go backwards. You just want to connect the last one up and close this. Now we could say Let's rotate this on the point 0.1 Z direction on the upwards direction because we are rotating around that. So we'll be rotating like this. So what you see, we can turn, do all kinds of things. Now, if you find this is a bit too slow, we could say we can rotate it something bigger like 5. Uh, middle one. Minus 5. You see, is it you can rotate really fast and go in the direction you want. Now, what you'll see here is our player is hovering in mid air. Now, if we were to add a cube, it's going to be acting as our wall. What we can do is we can come over here and we can give this box collision, uh, collision bound, sorry, and we can just box. So what you see is when we go forward, hit this, we just go straight through it. That is because our object is a static object. It Stuff can collision with it, but if it goes to another static object and we just try to drive through it, it's just going to go straight through and not even care. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change this to a different physics type. So we have... Dynamic, rigid body, and character. For now, we're just going to be using character. So, this gives you a bunch of settings you can play with, but we're just going to leave those for now. You can look at those in another tutorial. And if we were to add a plane, scale it out for it to land on, you see, as it falls down, and we can rotate, drive around. But what happens now is if we collision with this, it won't let us go in. So it stops our cube from driving in. Plus, you get the added feature of your cube can fall now. So that's how you set up some basic movement in the Blender game engine. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this tutorial, comment them down below. And you can also subscribe for tutorials every single week. So make something awesome in the Blender game engine and see you next week.